The following is a spoiler cast on Nier Automata, in which all aspects of the game will be covered. If you wish to keep your experience pure, please give it a listen after you've fully completed the game. Glory to mankind. Welcome to True Route Radio, the podcast that dissects games from start to finish. I'm your host, Trongasm, but you can call me Mom. And today, I've deployed four very special guests to dive straight into the world of Nier Automata, or Automata if you're nasty. As I introduce them, they'll tell a little bit about themselves along with their relationship to the Yokotaro Expanded Universe. Starting with Hazukari. Hi, I'm uh, Hazukari on Twitter. Um... My experience with, like, Yoga Tower games is kind of limited, I feel, of everyone here. I've only played the original Nier and Dragon Guard 3 and this, obviously. Alright, and next we have Slow Beef. Hello, um, I've read Let's Screenshot Let's Plays of Dragon Guard, Dragon Guard 3, a little bit of 2, uh, and Nier, and I loved what I read of Nier, and when Automata uh, was coming out, I played the demo, fell in love with it, and I'm like, I gotta play this, so I did. All right, next we got Rising Superstar Liam. Hi there. Um, yeah, I I played through Dragon Guard, Dragon Guard Three. Uh, Near is like my second favorite game, and Near Automata is like also my second favorite game. Uh, Dragon Guard Two is the only one I don't really know too well. Got, I gotta ask then, what's your first favorite game? <laughs> Streets of Rage. My <laughs> okay, man. That's choice. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, Kira Buckland. Hi, so I'm the English voice actress for 2B, and I will have to admit I actually didn't know a whole lot about Yoko Taro's previous works when I started working on this game, and so I kind of started exploring that through working on Automata, and then, you know, after playing through that, I was like, oh, I'm I'm curious about all the others now, which I know is, like, backwards, but sorry, I was anxious to play the game that I was in. So right now, um, my friend who voices 9S is currently playing through the original Nier on his live stream, so I've gotten to see some of that. Mm-hmm. That's as good a reason as any to take it in a backwards order, honestly. Hey, you were also Diala in the Trap series on Newgrounds, weren't you? <laughs> Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did videos on that way back what? then. That's so, funny. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Small world. So, since we have a full house for this podcast, I figure we go in a roundabout like fashion and address a list of questions we received on Twitter. But feel free to chime in as you see fit. Tom, if we're a full house, who's who's the Olsen twins? <laughs> um, oh man, you've been working on that one for months, right? I have. I I've been waiting for that exact moment. I guess you'll be Mary Kate, or actually, you might not exist according to current conspiracy theories. So, okay, that makes you Bob Saget then. I'm fine with being Bob Sack. <laughs> okay, this, I guess we'll, guys, um... guys, th- everybody, this cannot continue. <laughs> this cannot continue. This cannot continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, first question off the bat is, um, I guess well, let's find out how you found out about this game. I know Liam was really excited yeah. when this game first got announced. Let's talk about E3 2015. You're asking me the question that you knew would hurt me the most. Um, yeah, E3 2015, um, I, formerly I was with Super Best Friends Play, and we had been recording and or live streaming all of the E3 press conferences, and Square Enix's came on, and for whatever reason we said, ah, whatever, let's just not live stream this one. And it was really good, uh, but when Near Automata came on, I've never had such an emotional reaction to anything in my life. Um, and like, I would pay like a thousand dollars for the fucking video of me reacting to that. Um, it, it killed me when like, there was this German guy online who was super hype about the announcement and like Square Enix flew him out to a concert and shit. And like when Wooly and Matt saw that, they were like, oh my God, Liam, you were so much more excited than that guy. Like this is the most unfortunate situation in the world. Um, seriously, I'd pay like a thousand dollars for that video because I was I was crying in the grocery store. Like it was, it was very it was very emotional. Near's very near and dear to me, and I never like that game has incredible closure. I never thought they would do a sequel to that. I thought we'd get Drake and Guard Four or whatever. You know, that's me. I guess I'll get started on how I got into this game. So um, I played the original Near and the original Dragon Guard, 
And to be honest, I didn't think they were that... Well, gameplay-wise, they weren't that great. I think the writing was pretty good. So when this got announced, I went immediately to your, to your feed because I knew you'd be really excited about it. And I actually didn't <laughs> play this game for about two weeks after it came out until you start telling everyone that it needed to play it. And sure enough, it's probably going to be my game of the year unless something beats it. Hmm. I, I can't I can't imagine any the like what game could come out in 2017 that could supplant this as game of the year right now. Um, so I maybe um, a certain Breath of the Wild, but oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I was so Breath of the Wild is a hard second for me, definitely. You have to understand for me. I have two kids. I, I kind of talked about like so I put off Automata, um, and I still haven't played Breath of the Wild by the way, uh, because you know I have two kids. So basically, my Twitter timeline, people who kept teasing out spoilers to it. And I played the demo, and I'm, I'm finally like, all right, I gotta freaking play this now before, or somebody's gonna go too far mm-hmm. one day, and stuff. So I, I ended up streaming it, and um, it was like one of those can't put it down type of things. And I like at work, I was just like, I gotta get home and play more Automata. This is gonna be great. So um, there you go. I guess we can start going to the next um, section. We have a whole bunch of questions for Kira right here. Um, <laughs> our first question from Twitter user, pretty obvious, is how did you get the part? <laughs> In so, the most basic terms. Um, just to be honest, I auditioned for it, you know, kind of like we auditioned for a lot of things and had no clue what we were auditioning for because a lot of times they're pretty secretive about that kind of stuff. Like they don't usually tell you the name of the game that you're reading on or this or that. So I remember... They're just like, okay, we have like this new game if people want to come in and audition. And, you know, obviously I did. And um, the characters that they had me read for were Pascal and 2B. And I remember when they had me read for 2B, I was really surprised, to be honest, because if any of you guys have heard any of my other works, they don't <laughs> really sound like that. I play like a lot of mean girls and like a lot of teenagers and you know, kind of young, snarky characters. So playing someone like 2B was definitely new territory for me. And so, of course, I auditioned, and I'm like, man, I'm going to be really surprised if I get this one, but I really hope that I do. And, you know, a couple weeks later, or however long it took, I can't remember, they called me back, and they're like, hey, you got the part. And I'm like, what? And I didn't realize, because, you know, we didn't know anything. There wasn't even, like, really information on the game out or anything at the time, because this was a long time ago that we recorded, and they were like, okay, um, you, you got the part for 2B, and then when I found out she was essentially, like, the main character of the game, well, I mean, that's debatable when you get to the later parts, but um, I was like, wait, I'm, like, the main character, and I remember we were recording, like, her intro speech that everything that lives is designed to end kind of thing, and they're like, yeah, this is the first thing that the players are going to hear when they start the game, so it needs to be really good, but no pressure. No pressure. (laughs) (laughs) So, just like, okay, and I had no idea, like, people were like, did you know that this was going to be big? And I was like, no, because a lot of times, you know, we go in and we, we record for so many different, like, RPGs and stuff like that and they had kind of explained like so this is sort of like a sequel to the original game called Near, and you know it has sort of like a small like cult following sort of thing and I was like okay yeah that's you know kind of typical a lot of the games that I do or whatever and then after we recorded everything I start seeing like pictures of 2B <laughs> some safe for work some not just showing up all over my feed and I start seeing people talking about the game and freaking out about the game and some of them are my friends but I can't say anything because we're like we can't say anything till the game comes out about like being involved in it or anything like that so I'm just sitting there like being tortured as I'm seeing all this 2B stuff on my feed and I'm like I want to say something but I can't so it was. I like, think that was even like even after the demo came out, you couldn't talk for a little while, right? Yeah, the reason we finally got to talk about it is because like two weeks before the U.S. release, the Japanese release came out, and it had English credits and an English voice mm-hmm. track. And normally games don't even put English credits, so you know, all of a sudden people were like, it, it happened like one night, and. My Twitter was exploding. My Facebook was exploding. My text, like, everyone's like, to be. And I'm like, what? Did something get leaked? Like, the first response is, like, panicking because you're like, did something Did something get out that wasn't supposed to? I'm going to get in so much trouble. But I knew, like, I hadn't said anything. So I was just, like, freaking out. And they're like, no, here's a screenshot of the Japanese credits. Like, your name is in the credits. I'm like, ah. So I, I made, like, a really bad pun on Twitter. And I'm like, <laughs> what was it? Something like... I realized I don't have to wait nearly as long to announce that big role that I was hinting at. It's going to be huge or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, people were like, what? Like even my friends, because no one guessed because it's so different from everything else that I normally do that 
-hmm. like at least Uh none of my friends were like i had no clue it was you even playing the demo oh yeah um i had a hunch I guess, not to say that they sound similar, because you voice a lot of different characters, but I had a feeling that you wouldn't be involved, since you're in a lot of Japanese games. Like, just recently, I tried to guess who you're going to be in Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, she looks like... She- I tried to um have my friends guess which one that I played, and then they're like, wait, that one has, like, an Ojo-sama laugh in her picture. I think that one's you. <laughs> It's like, yep. Yeah. And sure enough, your line in that game, Exploding Knee, became a little bit of a meme on Twitter. I saw that on your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the meme king these days. Apparently. <laughs> uh, Tom, your memes are very good. I went from like 600 followers last year to like 3,000 something now. So I guess JoJo <laughs> shit posting really helps hey, out. Hey, I do it? that too. And I haven't really, I've gotten a few <laughs> followers from that. But yeah. no, I think I've got like four, my follower count increased by like four or 5,000 after Nier came out. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think oh, it's wow. a long, a long ways from when you were at that certain con that we won't talk about, where no one showed up to your autograph signing or something. Right, and now it's like, yeah. hey, to be body pillows, um, game covers. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I guess here's a question from late on Twitter. Um, did you have any direct contact with Yoko Taro and any special things about the direction you were given? No, I did not get to meet him. Um, I'm not sure if he had any input in casting the English cast or not. I always assumed that, you know, it was probably maybe people kind of working for him that handled a lot of that. So I had no clue if he had even heard the English voices. I was like, oh, I mean, maybe he checked him out out of curiosity. But I figured it was kind of like... You know, obviously the the original voices would be what he's like surrounded by and stuff. But mm-hmm. then one day I got a tweet and I, and I nearly like I I was like, wait, is that an imposter? Like I nearly jumped out of my skin and it was it said at Yoko Taro followed you and I was like, wait, is this like you know? Because there's like a lot of Twitter <laughs> imposters. Like people have impersonated me and tweeted like to be lewds and, and all sorts of stuff. But um. Then he said, thank you for your cool voice with a smiley face. I remember the tweet word for word, and <laughs> I, I like, screamed. I screamed and threw my phone across the room. Because <laughs> I didn't even think he, like, heard what I did or whatever, you know. So we, we did have people from 8-4 um, who were there supervising things, and we had a voice director. So, you know, a lot of times when people, they complain about, like, oh, like, I hate the English voice actor because she just did whatever she wanted. And I'm like, no, that's we really had a lot of direction, a lot of uh, guidance along the way. And, you know, our job as actors is to try to bring kind of like someone else's story and vision to life. So people thinking that English voice actors just go in and mess with the characters however they want. That's not true at all. Yeah, it's fairly common that like the, the, the Japanese directors are kind of hands off and it's more left to the localization team, right? Yeah, that's usually who we had people from there. Right, supervising. yeah. All right, I guess next question is from Zachary Flatterty. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, did voicing a protag spoil the story at all when you played it, like learning spoilers, etc.? A little. Um, you know, because obviously when you have to voice the infected stuff and this and that, you just kind of, <laughs> you know, that's coming. But a lot of it... You know, because one, we recorded so far before the game actually came out, because that's especially since they had dual audio on the Japanese release as well. You can kind of imagine how, you know, sometimes we'd go back and re-record something because we're like, we don't have the Japanese audio for this yet. So they'd have to wait till they had it so we could have that for reference. And the other thing, too, is we didn't necessarily record everything in order of gameplay because just kind of the way things are set up, sometimes it's like, okay. Now we're going to, like, record all the side quest stuff. Now we're going to record this story stuff. Now we're going to do all the movies, like, all the cutscenes, because we have to do those to picture to make sure it fits, you know? So it's like we would do a lot of those at once, I think, before or after. I, I, probably after we did all the story stuff. So it's like, you know, they're, like, explaining stuff to you and this and that, but not everything is kind of linear and... I'm not really seeing the parts of the script that Tubi isn't involved in. And then obviously like the stuff that happens after Tubi, like a lot of stuff with like A2 and 9S and then some of the truce reveal, it's like, I didn't know that. So a lot of that was like, we actually could see our reactions to it on live stream when me and Nines found out. We were just like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about um, ending E more later, but yeah, that must've been um, kind of shocking for you. Yeah. <laughs> Question from Hayden Kunkel. Is there any way we can listen to any audio bloopers or screw-ups? Um, 
I don't really think we had too many of those. Like, why don't you do it right now? Just record something like really wrong. Just, no, <laughs> um, say something incriminating. <laughs> I can't even think because I don't know. A lot of like the improv I do is just like stupid stuff. Like when I decided that 9S would drink from sippy cups and Tubi would get upset about this. Like you, you need to drink from a real cup and just be like, no, I like it Tubi. <laughs> Just like stuff like that, or like mm-hmm. you know, I have this Fine. running joke with like Nine S's voice actor where, um, because I I make fun sometimes of the way he just yells like to be all the time in the game. So it's like if I'm going across the room to get something to be, you can't do that. And I don't know, just like stupid stuff like that. <laughs> I can't really think of anything. Like, I mean, sometimes I just do fun stuff in character. Like, I was at a little tiny local con, and they had a photo shoot, and there was a 9S cosplayer there, and I was wearing the pink bow. So I, like, was saying stuff in character, like, I think it's best if you wear this item we received or whatever, and, like, put it on their head for pictures. (laughs) So. I guess one last question for me about this, unless you guys have something. Like, were you already familiar with, like, a lot of friends when you were working on this thing, or um, did you make any new ones, voice acting-wise? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually didn't know, because obviously since we're going in and recording everything separately, I didn't even hear. I knew some of who was in the cast, because you just sort of find out by accident or, you know, whatever when you're working on something. But since we're not getting to hear what other people did, I would say, you know, even with certain things that I knew or remembered about the story, it felt so much more emotional seeing it with the soundtrack. And the soundtrack to this game is amazing, by the way. Mm -hmm. And hearing the other characters because you know for example I didn't get to hear anything that 9s recorded so I'm doing these lines like where I'm supposed to be responding to him and it's really emotional but I had no idea like what you know what he was doing or sometimes maybe he wouldn't have even recorded yet and then in the game when I see stuff like that play out and it's like we're talking to each other it just it's so much more like real and you know, I would say, like, yeah, like, we definitely became friends, me and Kyle, 9S, um, and we didn't really know each other before that, so oh, nice. definitely kind of made friends. I was already friends with Erica, who plays Anemone, and um, I kind of kind of met my pod on Twitter, which was cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that DC Douglas? Or Yeah, he tweets funny stuff. Oh, was it DC Douglas? Yeah, I never uh, knew that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The funny thing was, it's fun. Yeah. the game's kind of funnier if you imagine Albert Wesker is telling is telling you. Yeah, stuff people constantly. have said stuff about that. I think I said something stupid to him, like proposal. You should follow me, and he did. Or proposal, <laughs> follow. You're a unit awesome. to be. All right. Um, I guess now we'll get into the nitty gritty of some of the narrative stuff. Um, themes and references found in near. I guess you did a lot of research on this, um, Hazu. Um, I did some. I watched a couple of movies just like after I beat this, just because. I was like, oh, this has similar themes to, like, a couple movies I really like, so I should see if, like, that still holds up or not. Probably the two biggest ones that I noticed while watching, uh, I mean, after playing Nier were, um, I noticed that Yoko Taro definitely, I think, lifts a lot of themes from, uh, both the Andre Tarkovsky movie Stalker, because that's a movie also that deals a lot with, like, the idea of, like, can things that normally don't have emotions have emotions? In the case of Stalker, it's aliens, but very much, like, the themes of it and the presentation of it kind of reminded me of Nier. And the other thing that I think that, like, I really noticed a lot of similarities to was um, the anime Kishurn Sins, because that's also about, like, sad robots in the apocalypse. So I was like, oh, it's, Nier is just a more refined, um, smarter version of Kishurn Sins, because it's also about, you know, sad robots in the apocalypse. Maybe not not as rusty and a little bit more plant life involved. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, um... On that that Tarkovsky bit, there's a uh, a, a part of Japanese folklore. Uh, I, I forget its exact name right now, um, but there's a part of Japanese folklore, or maybe it's Shintoism, uh, about the belief that objects, uh, non living objects, kind of grow their own spirit. Yeah, the soul. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Shinto, I, I think. Yeah, um, uh, sure. Yeah, so so that as well, I think was was a big part of where that went. But mm-hmm. I I do think it really also built on the ideas brought up in near about yeah 
Yeah, uh, no, definitely. I completely agree. Synthetic, synthetic beings developing souls. It kind of like questions your morality at the end when you're just like, do I really want to kill these machines? Like even yeah. early on in the game when you realize the ones just walking around the city or whatever, you're like, wait, I shouldn't kill these guys. These ones aren't attacking me. Mm-hmm. So then if they're not, I don't know what you guys did, but I know for me, it's like when I would see some that weren't hostile, like I'm not going to beat up on them. <laughs> I actually had to change an option early on where uh, 9S was set to aggressive. So he would attack everyone in sight. Yeah. And I felt really bad because he was just yeah. shooting every peaceful robot just hopping around. Yeah, I did the same thing as well because I was like, oh, no, they're just minding their own business. I don't want to kill them. Yeah, and the ones in the amusement park, they're just having fun. M- yeah. Machines aren't capable of rational thought or action, mm-hmm. though. So The machines don't have feelings. You said so yourself. Yeah. The other, the other thing I noticed, I, w- I rewatched this last week because um, it doesn't have like very similar like themes to Nier, but it has like a very lot of similar aesthetics, especially like you know vast landscapes in the desert, which was um, the 1985 movie Ti- The Time Intranger, which is it kind of deals with like the idea of like melancholy at the end of the world, which is kind of a Nier, but like I remember just like aesthetically, it reminded me a lot of Nier, especially like a lot of like the desert stuff. Um, I'm I'm kind of reminded in general of, like Blade Runner in a way, uh, but it, what really hit me about the sort of humanity that's sort of bestowed upon the machines, and I don't know if we want to talk about this just yet, but like it, Pascal's fate is that like too early? To talk uh, about yeah, we can we, but, we um, talk about it now. It's fine. Man, I feel like a dick. Okay, I guess I get, well, let's go. Let's go in a circle, and I guess <laughs> let's ask what did you guys do to Pascal? I Man. I reset him. I reset him. I, re- I did uh, the I, dickest now, thing imaginable. I walked out. No, I, I I let him live as well. I think that was the right choice. That was. What uh, here's I what, was okay, right so, no, here's what here's what happened. I I walked out and then my power died, so I had to restart and do that segment again. Oh, oh. We had um we did that part on the stream and we kind of had like some conflict about it and we were like, hey, what do you guys think we should do? And then there's always that that jerk who's like, oh, just slice him up or whatever. But um, <laughs> no, we reset him as well. So, did you go to his village after resetting him as my Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this and then is... you're like, oh, like you call him Pascal, and he's like, oh, that name sounds oddly familiar or something, and I'm just like... <laughs> All right, so Slow Beef, did you want to explain to our listeners for people who haven't gotten back there? Yeah, so I think what really struck me, yeah, so what happens is if you opt to reset him and go back to the village as 9S later, because you reset him as A2... Um, he says, oh, you know, we're just, I'm just sort of tidying up the village here, uh, just getting rid of all this junk, which are his dead friends, but he has no idea. And 9S kind of says a thing like, Pascal, that's... And I actually didn't catch on <laughs> right away. But then he says, oh, I have some wares here, and he's a merchant, but he's selling machine heads, machine arms, machine legs, cores. children's it's cores. So it's yeah. I got asked, did anyone buy the core? <laughs> I did. And, no. Um, I bought the weapon, and but, uh... <laughs> I did. I I got that. I gotta get that achievement. <laughs> it, it's it's so practical to upgrade all your stuff that he just sells all the machine parts. It's great. The th- the thing about it though is I was thinking about it because that was it was really horrific and grotesque to me. But if you think like back earlier in the game, or even just sort of divorce yourself from it for a bit, these are machine parts. Like it shouldn't be horrific or grotesque or anything because it just it's just metal, right? But it's like this journey you've taken through the game, tur- like r- humanizes them and turns it into this like horrific thing that's going on. Yeah, yeah definitely. well, you know, like uh, it is it is theoretically possible to to map a human brain to technology. You know, ultimately, when you get down mm-hmm. to it, um, your brain's just composed of nodes that are either on or off, uh, exactly like binary. Mm-hmm. Uh, ultimately, it's theoretically possible to map a human brain. I, I watched a lot of stuff on it, actually, um, mm-hmm. before playing Automata, uh, coincidentally. Um, and so, you know, given 14,000 years of... 14,000 uh, years? Uh, 12,000 years of progress or whatever it is uh, uh, between mm-hmm. now and near Automata, it's, like, it's totally, like, cromulent that androids and machines would be as as human as humans. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even if you go back to near uh the the replicants uh taken over by just adults like they would be just as human as well uh by association you know so it's it's yeah on the one hand it's like yeah they're just machines but on the other hand it's like but like we're just machines but we're instead of cables we have veins and like that's ultimately it right you know so it's no yeah i totally i totally hear you on that i guess what i was getting at more was like just sort of artistically how well this whole experience was done is that it can evoke that reaction in yeah you. Mm-hmm. whereas you know if you really stop and think about it for a minute it's like there's nothing horrific about this it's just metal right and you know what i mean but it's like no it's not it's dead it's, children 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It's this it's this machine like unknowingly doing horrific things because Yokotaro is kind of an asshole sometimes. But mm-hmm. you know, and also when yeah. they start talking about their families and stuff, that's where you're like, oh, even yeah. when in the game, you're like, no, they can't have you know these family relationships. They're machines, whatever. But it's like. <laughs> You can't, like, I remember I felt so bad because there was a quest or something where it's like you have to bring this little one back to its mom or something. Yeah. And I didn't realize that mm-hmm. it would <laughs> it would die if you didn't, like, defend it well enough. And, and then if you yeah. go back and you have to be like, hey, sorry, it's like the worst feeling. <laughs> I'll I'll one up you. I accidentally hacked him. <laughs> oh Jesus! <And>, um, <laughs> yeah, so that was a that was an awkward mm. talk with mom. But uh, anyway, it's not different. But no, one of the things that came up on like I'm like part of like a spoiler group chat about like Nier and like we were talking about like they were, some people were comparing like the idea of like how Yoko Taro is also like a dark storyteller and someone brought up that like oh he's similar to Gen Urobuchi and I'm like. Not really, honestly, because mm-hmm. Gunnar Bucci, I feel like, is more someone who deals in the idea of, like, the supernatural or Lovecraftian idea of, like, horror and depression. Well, I feel like Yoko Taro is more kind of like a Joseph Conrad, kind of, like, more about, like, the depths of, like, how dark human minds can get. It's very existential and stuff, too. Yeah. Right. I would love to see Yoko Taro and Gunnar Bucci team up, though, because I feel like that would mm-hmm. be pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, have you yeah. ever read uh, Yoko Taro's manga? Oh yeah, I started reading after I beat uh, Nier. It's um, it's interesting. It feels like it feels like him taking like Mahoka and being like, you know what, this sucks. I'm gonna make it better. All right. So for listeners, basically, I forgot the title of it, but um, if you look it up, uh, Thou Shalt Not Die is what it's called. Yeah. 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 So um, in the future, people send students with superpowers to go out to fight wars. Except, of course, these students, even though they have magic powers, they have no idea how war is like. So within like the first couple pages, see a whole bunch of like teenage kids like get massacred. Yeah. And like. Yeah, like, it's kind of like how, like, Mahoka is like that, but except Mahoka kind of makes it look like it's cool to fight and, you know, kill people, and then this is just, like, horrifying and terrible. I guess this is a good time to start talking about the narrative of Nier Automata. Um, when playing through the game, I... It reminded me of back when I was in middle school and I actually read a lot of real literature, like um, Asimov, um, Philip Dick, Harlan Ellison, stuff like that. A lot of stories about robots and what it means to be human. So when playing Nier, it reminded me of a lot of these short stories whenever you're doing side quests, and the whole game felt like an anthology of what it means to exactly be human. Yeah, definitely. J- just like the first game, um, not all the side quests were winners, uh, but the ones that were were like really solid short stories. I totally agree. Um, and they're all very well like self-contained in that regard. And some of them, especially the ones related to like the E unit and stuff or the E type uh, Yorha unit. Uh, like have really strong relations to like core ideas in the main story, which is which is really dope. So, uh, no, I totally agree with you on like that kind of short story style of delivery for the side quests. It's really satisfying. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got a question here from uh, Tai Kia. He says, in a Super Bunny Hop video, he contends that there's a connection between Marxism and machines. What say you? Uh, I see it. Yeah, a, <laughs> a, f- a faction of the machines. Yeah, it's it's like. It's acknowledged in the game, right, that, like, the machines could have just wiped out the androids, but, like, because they need a an enemy to keep fighting, they, like, intentionally stunt their own growth as a, uh, almost as a species, and so they, like, they branch their, their evolution, so, you know, Pascal ends up creating, like, a very peaceful faction, um, one faction turns towards religion, um, etc and definitely when you look at um eagles and what's his fucking face uh the other the other big robot whose name i forget at this moment them and the factory are definitely very much parallels to marxism i feel yeah Mm -hmm. and and pretty much every every one of the factions can be drawn out to to historically like historic groups or historic um i guess human group ideologies i suppose and that mm-hmm. was like the machines trying to like grow in different ways. The, the Forest King is another example, like that. That forest yeah, it's about that becomes a literal kingdom. So yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, that's it's it's really cool how they how they create all these different castes and these different societies. Um, yeah, and I think oh, and the, and the desert people who who pick up oh, yeah. uh, from facade, <laughs> uh, facade, which is yeah. which is yeah, not actually a real place, but when you see how they operate, you're like, oh, they're operating just like facade did. Um, and that's that's expanded on a lot in the DLC actually, which is which is cool. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that the notion that there's, um, that Marxism is associable, associatable, I don't know, the, that Marxism 
goes with some of the machines. Like I, I totally believe that's credible and intentional. Yeah. Well, what does that make your then? Is my question. Pardon? Well, my question then is, what does that make your then? If the machines are Marxism, what, what would that make your a Yorha is like trying to be humans, but they also kind of like worship humans um, in a way. Humans you know, like, basically like, became their own they, gods at, like, at like, a certain point. Y- Yorha, they're like the ultimate evolution of like the Replicant and Gestalt project, where like they're built in the uh, built in the like physical form of humans in order to rekindle humanity. Um, and like they, they, but but it's clear that they keep themselves distinct from humans too like they salute with their left hand they never salute with their right hand which is like typical mm-hmm. human salute like there, there's a lot of like subtle things about how they know they're below humanity but they're always fighting for humanity so i think i think your is really just like created in the image of humanity like and they initially were subservient but they eventually became like we got to save humans the faction i guess they're kind of mm-hmm. Yeah. If I can say something about this part of um, the start of uh, Route C, it became kind of creepy at a moment when everything was all black and white and all the Yorha units were dressed in like this. The Jinro armor. <laughs> yeah, the, like, yeah. All, all that armor. And they were talking this weird, um, they had a filter over their voice. It made them seem almost more mechanical than the uh, machines themselves when you spent so mm-hmm. long. I think that's supposed to be the idea, though, of their dehumanization, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. No, it, it becomes very apparent that despite the fact that. Um, Yorha are effectively the descendants of humans, uh, whereas machines are the descendants of aliens. Like, the machines actually were more successful at becoming human. Mm-hmm. Or, because even though mm-hmm. they spent hundreds of years trying and not making... Some of them yeah. made progress, especially Pascal. Yeah, yeah. The, one, the one analogy mm-hmm. uh, one of my friends brought up that I kind of agree with is that um, <laughs> Yorha are supposed to represent like the idea of uh, taking from the tree of life, and then machines are supposed to be from the tree of knowledge. Yeah, arguably so, yeah. All right, that um, is a good point to lead into my next uh, question. This one's from Mr. Nitpicky Nerd. Would the game have been a better experience if it was just named Automata? And I think that brings in a good Catch-22 I want to talk about, where um, I feel like just because I played near a lot of these like big bombshells that were dropped during this game, I kind of saw it coming or kind of expected. And But at the same time, I think playing original Nier enhances the experience playing Automata. So I find my yeah. myself in a weird place. I absolutely agree. I, I, think, uh, I think it works better as... Uh, you can play it standalone, absolutely. I think it works better as a sequel. Um, I think there's a lot of moments that'll be a lot stronger as a sequel. And I think ideologically, it it, it really carries off of Nier like, a lot. Nier's, Nier's like, about um, a conflict where the two sides can never truly communicate um and about like um like one side is able to understand that like both sides like are are worthy of existence but like they kind of need to take back their bodies or like they want to that's the shadow lord and co um and the other side like they'll never be able to communicate but like they want to keep their their world the way it is and like that builds forward into automata where it becomes like even more more like finite and it's about like okay well the machines and androids like are they like are they as good as humans are they as you know they're, they're like almost fighting a similar fight um because they're you know yeah uh I, I i think they build i may not have put it very eloquently there but i think they i think it builds off of near ideologically very very well so i think keeping the name near in there is is appropriate would you if they made a sequel would you want it to be called like dragon guard 4 or another near thing or would you want it to be his own thing you think yeah I, I mean, I think it depends, right? Like, if it continues to build off of the ideas set forth in Nier, then I think it should be Nier. Because Dragon Guard's a lot more focused on, like, violence and sadness through violence, I suppose. Um, and, like, Nier, Nier is a lot more existential violence and, and, and such. I, I think they do have, like, distinct flavors. I feel like I, I know the least about, like, Drakengard and Nier, the originals, um, but I, I don't really see much of a thematic connection between Drakengard and Nier. It seemed just like Nier was sort of a spinoff of it, and, you know, it's, like, kind of, sort of the same universe, in, so to speak, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's, like, an incorrect assessment of that, so I definitely wouldn't see a Drakengard thing. I... I could go either way. I could, I see the connections to the original near. I just I feel like Automata was enough of its own story. I, I certainly don't think you lose anything. 
I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't. I don't think it's. I certainly don't think it's necessary, or that you lose out too much if you play Automata before Near, or vice versa. But I do think. I definitely think Near only adds to it in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, kind of keeping it in the title is good for people who have played both because then they realize that there is a connection. I mean, I think mm-hmm. they still have the surprise of finding things that reference the original Near. But if they just acted like it was something totally different, then people who are fans of the original Nier might not be as motivated to pick it up. I don't know. Yeah, on 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 that topic, what I what I find most surprising about the interactions and stuff is like the game takes place a significant amount of time after. So it was really interesting to see how things from the first game came back like ten thousand years later. Obviously, not everyone was going to be alive ten thousand years later. So, like, it was kind of fascinating to see, like, to see Yona's name dropped explicitly, to see, um, to see how Emil came back, in a sense. Uh, that, that was what I found really interesting about that, too, because, like, like, the characters couldn't just walk on screen, you know, they're all, they're all fucking dead, like, so it was, um, yeah, I, I agree with you there. It, it's super interesting t- uh, to, to see how everything plays out in that sense, and it keeps you, like, keeps you guessing, I guess. I do think you get a bonus from um, the Devil and Popola um, plot line. Yeah. yeah. By knowing about definitely. it in advance. Because I'm sure if someone never played it, that would be like, oh, there's these two sad robots. But I don't know. The, you know, they wouldn't know the yeah. backstory. Yeah, I, I definitely do agree the consensus that, like, you can definitely play this without playing the original Nier. I do feel like playing the original Nier does enhance the experience. But, like, if this is your first experience with, like, a Yoko Taro game, like, it's, I think it's a pretty good one to start with, personally. Yeah. I mean, can't go wrong. Yeah, it's by Platinum Games, so like it's the first Yoko Taro game also that actually plays very well and isn't kind of clunky. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. a, something that's I always the one thought thing I've was heard, kind yeah. of funny. Where um, people who didn't know anything about like Yoko Taro games or what to expect, and they're like, "Oh, I bought Automata because it's got like hot girls and lots of action, <laughs> and that's what they're expecting the whole time." And then it's like, surprise, get hit with sadness and feels, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you thought it was about booty, but it's it. actually about being depressed in the future. Yeah. But also, also booty. It fair. is true, yes. Okay, Makama has actually a good thing he wants to bring up. He wants us to talk about the Red Girls. Um, I saw them as being really, really similar to Ma- um, Mana from Dragon Guard 1. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, you're the only one that's played that one, right, Liam? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I think it's implied that they pretty much looked at that stuff. The, the Machine Network pretty much looked at um the events of that game and said hey let's just let's just model this aspect of our network off of that um but unless i'm forgetting something from drakengard like the connections uh it's pretty skin deep um like it's it's not like there isn't a huge amount of meaning unless like i might be forgetting significant stuff from drakengard because i haven't played it since like high school but i couldn't remember anything like really meaningful there uh, I think I think besides the obvious like the color just is a like inverted color scheme. I think it's also the fact that um the voice becomes like a deep demonic man, that male old man voice. Yeah, that like mm-hmm. creeped me out so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, and mm-hmm. and the smiles, the smiles. Are so yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, uh, Mana from Dragon Guard One oh, also yeah. had a really um <laughs> nefarious looking smile as well. So yeah, that dope shot of her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess um Gypsy Magic wants us to discuss about the gameplay. Sorry, I'm going off tangent here. Um, so Gypsy Magic says that they found the game akin to like Kingdom Hearts, but found Kingdom Hearts better. I think in terms of Platinum games, it felt really good, but it never really got like really deep like Platinum games normally do. Yeah, I, I remember in like an early interview, um, I can't remember if it was Atsushi Inaba from Platinum or if it was Yoko Taro himself. One of the two said that like, yeah, I think it was Atsushi Inaba said that like, yeah, they want to keep it more like accessible to players of like action RPGs like Nier. And they didn't want to, they didn't want to alienate people who'd played the previous games, the previous games like including Dragon Guard, um, and suddenly like they were faced with like difficult like bayonetta combat or something like that. They wanted to keep it fairly straightforward. So like yeah, the the games at at face value it's shallower and it doesn't ask as much of you um, to to play successfully like like games like Revengeance or Bayonetta, um, but like as demonstrated by a lot of great like combo video makers uh the games the game's genuinely just as deep if you like toss yourself in and want to really try intricate stuff out Mm -hmm. just it takes more work to get there because they they hand you so many simple solutions in this game so 
I was going to say, I, uh, a friend of mine has told me, like, he couldn't get into 9S because, you know, 9S is down a weapon, totally, you know, so he's, um, yeah, so, but I was saying, like, if you do things like they include the counter chip so you, like, can bring parrying into it, and there, if you, you can do more with him, like, if you delay your square attacks and things like that, and there's, like, the, the whole, the fact that you can hack into the machines and subjugate each and every one is is a pretty great addition to things and a lot of fun to play with. So I'm totally agreed there. Yeah, the more you put into it, the more you can get out yeah. of it. Yeah, I the 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 complaint that like nine S is down down a weapon. Basically, like for anyone who hasn't played it, well, why did you listen this far into the podcast? You've been spoiled the whole yeah, way through. Say. <laughs> but like, so like his square button is attack and his triangles hack. Um, but if you delay your square presses, you get the heavy button attacks. So mm-hmm. while you can't have two weapons equipped at the same time so like you lose a bit of that he can still do like pretty much everything else at, admittedly a little and, bit slower because you have to delay your presses but like and you, you, you could you, you could, could really tell who didn't that. want to f- to find the depth in the combat by the people who like shat on 9s's gameplay the hardest um. <laughs> you know, I, and you can do like kind of sick things with hacking too. Where if you're fighting a big cluster of, if you're fighting like a, a big group and you manage to cluster them and get them to low health, and then just hack one detonate yeah. and like, it's really, it is really for cool. sure. And like you can like wall slam enemies so they go into like the splat animation on the wall and hack them during that while they can't do anything. Like there's a lot of great stuff you can do with hacking that's super stylish. When you're in time <laughs> slowdown, you can parry multiple <laughs> times during that, so they take a whole bunch of damage when you get off slow mo. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. As much as I was frustrated with the hacking at first, because I was really bad as, at it, as anyone who watched the stream can tell you, it was like, then when I was not doing it, I was kind of missing being able to do it. So it's like, oh man, if I were nines right now, I could just like hack into this and kind of, you know, get it over with or whatever. So, mm. But I kind of mm. like that the game just keeps throwing so much stuff at you. And it kind of like takes you out of your comfort zone by being like, hey, now you're going to do this. Now you're going to do that. And, you know, it's not the same thing the whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So never people say like, oh, the gameplay is repetitive, which is a criticism that I read a lot about this game. I'm just like, what do you mean? (laughs) I mean, I guess like (laughs) when you've been hacking for a long time or whatever, you're just like, stop. But you get to do so many different things. Yeah. And you kind of like make the action system as much. Like I kind of want to steal this idea for my own kind of game where... It would be like a side scroller where you get to choose between like having a Castlevania jump or a Mega Man jump, and then you know later on by spending more ability points you can get like a double jump or an air dash or something like that. Just you know equipping different kinds of chips that change the properties of how the game plays. That'd be really mm. awesome. Yeah. The... Well, can I voice act in your game? <laughs> yes. Me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my only minor complaint with the gameplay is that like A two played a little bit too similar to two B, but that's like my only real kind of minor complaint, honestly. My. My complaint, and I had no idea you were going to be in this podcast, by the way, but um, my only complaint is that I did not like A2 anywhere near as much as I like 2B. So this is not yeah. me just fanboying. That was something I played. I think you don't really use, get a chance to use Berserk that much. Yeah, yeah I only it, used it twice, I think. <laughs> definitely. And yeah, there's it, that. The, in terms of gameplay, the Berserk's, like, super not necessary. It's awesome, but, like, and they also give it to you at a terrible point. Like, trying to learn to use it during the Heagles fight is, a, yeah. is, uh, is had, not a good time. I died of trying no, to learn yeah. it. Yeah, that's it, at drain, a point when it, it drains your health point. during that fight, yeah. and that's, like, the most... It's a great, like, cinematic moment to give you that power during this, like, overwhelming fight, but in practice, like, it just ends badly for you. Uh, definitely. I, I ended up never... I ended up never using it. Like people, because I streamed it. People in my chat who were more knowledgeable, because I waited a bit Mm -hmm. to play it, were like, "Yeah, it's a bad fight for this, but you can use it for other stuff." But I was just kind of like, "Nah." Yeah, I only used it for like the last boss and stuff. Yeah, I only used it on um, the Pascal fight. The what? The fight fight outside the factory when you're defending. Oh 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 oh! I was like, "Whoa, what did I?" Secret Pascal (laughs) fight. fight Yeah, it's actually a secret Pascal (laughs) boss fight. (laughs) That would be really Um, funny. Yeah, I will say A2 has, when you're doing the extended dash with A2 and her eye glows red, I will say that's really, really fucking cool as anime. It's very, yeah. it's very nice, yeah. I appreciated that she had a taunt as well, because um, mm-hmm. like the whole time through the game... I, you're, I, getting, I you're getting taunt chips and stuff like that? Well, I would occasionally stop and try to figure out how to taunt with the other characters, because you can taunt in every Platinum game, and it, it, like, mm-hmm. it annoyed me that I couldn't figure out how to taunt, and I was like, damn, I'm doing it wrong. And then when I got her, and it was like her main thing, and I was like, ah, good, finally. Now I'm motivated. You know, you can taunt as the other ones by flashing the flashlight. Yeah, but 
I was looking for okay. the, the the animation because yeah, I did oh. realize you can you can flicker the light to make them upset. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, if you flash the light in their eyes repeatedly, it's fun. Okay, um, I guess we'll start talking about the DLC. Um, Liam and uh, Kira, you were to that played it right. Yeah, yeah I haven't gotten all the way through it yet. Okay. Would you say it's worth it? Because I I just watched Liam play it, and that's pretty much it. Um. Go I ahead, think Karen. it's Go worth ahead. it to get to fight the CEOs. I mean, I'm sorry. I, like, freaked out when I found out about that. I haven't gotten to do that fight yet, but I'm just saying that, like, the whole novelty of that and experience, I think, is incredible. Yeah. Um, there are really strong points. I think that the CEO fights are very fun. Um, I think some of the new enemies you get to fight are really cool. Do you mind if I spoil stuff for the DLC or? It is a spoiler cast, so unless you yeah, okay, go yeah. for it. Um, you get to fight Shades, uh, which is awesome. Like Shades from the original Nier. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- there, there is a new style of hacking mini game when you hack certain enemies where it's like Geometry Wars 3. It's on a sphere. <laughs> it's yeah, not. I saw that. Um, and that is that throws you for a fucking loop the first time you see that. Let me tell you. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, ultimately it's like three arenas, uh, with a bunch of levels in them and, uh, a couple costumes that you unlock and then one extra piece of content that I'll, I'll talk about in a sec. And the arenas are, they're fine. You kind of need to be like level 80 plus if you even want to like finish them. Um, so if you've already deleted your save file, you're going to have to re-go through it. Like I, I had a save file ready for it that was capped out. So it was no problem. But for some people that might be a pain in the ass. Um, kind of like, kind of like how we're good Dark Souls 2 did their DLC where it's like, Oh, but I just new game plus now I can't, now I have I to. had that problem in Bloodborne actually, where I went in and, and yeah. new game plus and it was really, really difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um, so the, the arenas themselves, they're quite, they're good, but they're not outstanding. Nothing about them is like, insane or anything like that they're 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 satisfying and they're fun they're all right uh the ceo battles and like the special bosses are the highlights for sure and the special bosses include like yeah the shade tank uh you get to fight muramasa the blacksmith um (laughs) that fight is ridiculous because you have to fight through that um arena as a machine like you you have to take control of a machine to do it that fight is fucking absurd it's insane that fight like it's so hard um uh, and the other one has like obnoxiously high level enemies that will pretty much kill you in one shot. And I can't say that that's like super satisfying, but your mileage may vary. Um, then the, the other like chunk of content that comes with the DLC is a side story that you unlock after finishing all the arenas. And it's a, it's a side story where you play as uh, another machine um, and you get to experience like a couple days in that character's life. And he's kind of in disrepair. Um, and that, culminates in the uh music video that they released pre uh pre-release like pre-release of the game uh, and that's kind of like the the main part of his story is like that's that's why that music video is all about destroying dolls and stuff um so there's a whole other and that ends with a new ending as well so there's a 27th ending uh to mm, the game. does it have a different symbol or something it has a different symbol it has the band's logo the band who did the music video okay. it's their their <laughs> logo <not>? just gets <laughs> put next to zed at the end nice. um huh. But I, I honestly, like, I love Yoko Taro's games. I really do. I love Platinum's games. I have a really hard time recommending this DLC at the at the asking price. Uh, in Canada, it's it's like it's nineteen dollars, um, and it's like it's like three four hours of content tops. But most of it's just arena fights. Mm. Like it's not thrilling new story or anything like that. So I, I do have a hard time recommending it. But it's not outright bad. It's it is it's good. It's just arenas, so it's not like a super thriller or anything. Yeah. Although this is the part yeah. where you can just tell people to go watch your stream of it. <laughs> I'm not that much of a shit. Who am I, Jeff Thu? <laughs> I was a little surprised too at the price. Yeah. I thought. Um, I I'll probably like get it sometime. <laughs> no, I I think like wait for the sale and you'll have you'll have a rock in time. But the, the price is a, it's a bit high, and there's nothing to do with the costumes also because at that point in the game you're pretty much done. Like, because mm. you kind of have to be level 80 plus to even get the kind of costume. Um, I was a little you've... disappointed with that. Like, I thought you would just get it as part of the DLC. I didn't know that. Yeah, you have to earn them. Yeah. And, mm. and you can you get a bunch of, like, hair colors. Uh, you also unlock an item mm. that lets you level yourself down, which is cool. Um, 
but like there's nothing to do with them after like that's that's it you're 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 done you know so it's a bit limited and i kind of wish it was more towards the scope of the draken guard 3 dlc that was like five mini campaigns um or like the near dlc even that was i think the near dlc was even a little better than this so did they promise a story dlc yet or not the, no, they haven't committed to any DLC, and Yoko Taro is no longer at Platinum Games. So, mm. I personally, I think it's not likely that we'll see anything else. But if if we do, I think it probably won't be anything more than like Kaim costumes and stuff. Um, so I don't know. Okay, so I now guess we'll go into some questions we got about multiple playthroughs. This one from Smile Jolly Roger says, "What do you think Two B was thinking when she told A Two to take care of the future?" Thinking about it now in retrospect, do you think that she wanted um, A2 to kill Ninus as well, or? I don't think so, honestly. I Yeah, I also don't think so. I, I, I think I think there's clear, like, multiple meanings. Like, take care of 9S, because she loves, yeah, like, she super gives a shit about yeah. him. But also, like, take I'd... care of the future. Like, keep working on that human thing. That's a problem, <laughs> you know. I, I So I, I do think it has kind of multiple meanings. But I think, for me, it was, like, a general purpose, like, wish that, a2 could continue her work i suppose yeah. sort of like do what i can't do anymore now that i'm gone sort of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i kind of implied that it meant for ninus to live just a happy peaceful life which is honestly all i want for him after all the shit he's been through <laughs> yeah. oh he happened to show up at the worst possible moment yeah okay question from thirsty as fuck this is a very fitting name <laughs> <laughs> do you want to fuck or do you want to Two B scene has me to believe that was about nine as having a crush. After being it, I'm more convinced he wants to kill Two B. Thoughts? No. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, act- <laughs> I think act- it's well, made to make you think it's something that it's not. I mean, we yeah. don't know what it is. Like even like Kyle asked about it, and they're like, we can't say anything. <laughs> well, I I strongly feel like they use four asterisks as opposed to the the word fuck um, because they want to imply that something else is is possible or or indeed something else is the valid answer um exactly well, I they remember. curse in the game like that's like, like the reason yeah. it's blanked out i don't yeah. think and i think well, hey, kill yes. i think kill is a very appropriate answer for that as well um yeah. so i definitely think either interpretation is valid personally i i i'm also so, lean towards kill uh because i think i think fuck is too obvious um but does that mean then he wants to? He goes. He gets driven mad because A two beat him to it. I'm well, not sure like, because he. Lo- it's implied heavily that Nine S loves to be also, especially from that conversation with yeah. Eve. That like, yeah, Nine-S is madly in love with to be. I don't think. I, that's why I always assumed it was also fuck instead of kill because if 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 I remember correctly, the next line is him denying it strongly though. Hmm. Well, I, I'm well, pretty well, sure he doesn't the accept safe, it. Well, yeah, was that the same know if face seeing... with two B? Is my question. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm just reading this too much at face value, but I just t- I really kind of took it as presented, where it's just like, do you have a crush on? Her? Like, no, you know. But it's obviously mm-hmm. a more uh, stronger version of that. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it's it's very hard for me to put on the lens of okay. Well, what if nine S? Well, if nine wants to kill two B, nine S, and it's yeah. Like, I I don't know how to make that fit in the story right now. Well in my head you know that's fair yeah in 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 some of the like um novels that don't exist in the game like some of the 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 little chapters he's written uh, it's my fan it's been got it yeah his fan fiction um no it's been to listeners um yoko taro has been writing supplementary material for the game after it's out and (laughs) it's very easy to miss and some of it's not even really canon yeah um I think it's called the one called the memory cage um is demonstrated that 9s has like figured out what the jig is before she tries to kill him mm. it, it wouldn't so it wouldn't be the first time that he knew that like there was an inevitable bad end to this for him mm-hmm. uh mm. but I, I again i think both are valid and i think ultimately like even if he denies it i think he probably does want to do both at least a little bit yeah so i think that's something that can honestly be left up to like viewers interpretation because they can go either way just perfectly yeah he wants I, the vape with to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, why else would you use asterisks but vape? Hey, remember his... also, um, androids can canonically fuck, so... Or, or yes. attempt to, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, there was that interview where it's like, oh yeah, they can they can attach... Um, oh yeah, oh right, in that interview, yeah, 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 you're right. And they and can it, actually it, nut. 
emit the a semen like. The machines can try, like for you guys who remembered walking in on that. Yeah. 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 Oh, thing. I remember. <laughs> I who forgot? <laughs> that's like one of those. Yeah, that's gonna stay with me. <laughs> like that. What the fuck uh-huh. is this? Well, there was this a, cannot like, continue. Like, yeah, desert. you're right. It it should not continue. <laughs> Damn millennials. <laughs> 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 well, there's like that interview of Yoko Taro where it's like he has this whole thing about like oh yeah, androids can like attach appendages similar to sexual reproduction organs. They can also fake marriages and fake birth and like fake semen, I guess. And I was like, oh my god, ro- androids can actually canonically can can nut in near, or they could, yeah. That's why you get all the crush nuts. That's how I, that's where you grind them. Hey. All right, I guess we'll talk about ending E now. So we got a question from my friend Bames. Is requiring network access for ending E an acceptable risk for the motion weight it adds? Yes. What will this game be like in 10 years? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. What yeah. does it do if you don't have network access, by the way? I, I have a really good answer to that. Um, mm. So I, I actually, um, I had imported the game, and I was playing it before anyone like knew what the deal was, basically. Uh, mm. So my PSN account had been compromised a few days before, and so I didn't have access to PSN. And I, I mm-hmm. did it for like two and a half hours uh, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I absolutely could not do it. And at a certain point, the game buffs you and you become more powerful so you can succeed more. But then at a certain point later, after enough deaths, the enemies become invincible and you can't continue. Um, wow. So I, after doing more research, now that like the games come out in English and other people have had shots at it um, and who are, who are better at shmups than I have, it is possible to finish them after the 50th death when you get buffed and you become more powerful but before the 150th death where the enemies become invincible it's possible in that window in that like window of 100 deaths to finish it solo but it is incredibly difficult uh Mm -hmm. nothing changes the cutscene doesn't change and i would argue that like some of the meaning is lost on you a little bit um but it is it is Theori- well, not theoretically. It is actually doable. It's, but it is astoundingly hard. Can I humble brag for one do second? Do it. Do it. Do it. Sure. Quickly as I can. I was playing it at one in the morning. I was afraid my son was going to wake up, so I was in a rush. My brain totally short circuited. I forgot altogether about the right analog stick. <laughs> I had chat minimized. I was playing it by manually aiming the ship at all the credits and dodging. That's brutal. Everyone in chat is yelling at me. I survived nine and a half minutes. Thank That's you. That's great. Anyway. Nice. Man, I want to just, like, sit down with the people who did not, like, delete their data and just ask, like, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> a lot of it is because they want to go back and, and complete quests and yeah. stuff that they didn't complete. I like, did that's my plan, that. like, is to, you know, I want to be able to do all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I get, I, I, I do get that, but, I mean, I don't know. It, it kind of well, loses I, I, its... Yeah. Um, yeah. Emotional weight, in my opinion. But I mean, I get that stuff. I had a friend. I, I I had a friend who did that. It was just like I'm, I wanted to go back and hundred percent it. But at the time, I was just like that. I gotta. You know. Yeah. I, I felt like yeah. I felt. Of... I I was high on my emotions, and I was like, I gotta. Yeah. I, have to I wonder, and this is probably a stupid question, but like the very first people who played the game, what did they do at that part? Because they wouldn't have had people hmm. to help them. I was. I was thinking maybe the game staff like yeah. might have played it at first well, to kind of seed it. Um, to, yeah. You know what I mean? To, to be honest, um, to I be think it's honest, I'm sorry. to be honest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, jokes are prohibited. <laughs> um, to be honest, I think it's rigged. I don't think it's real. Um, I think the names get added to a list, but I don't think the list actually properly calls because otherwise, the list, the number of people on the list, could only ever deplete. It could never yeah, truly grow. To, yeah. Because everyone uses a couple, so you would have Actually, to have... humble brag, I didn't. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but, but yes, m- are... most, most people do. And on my second playthrough, I did. I, I went through... I fucking went through a lot of them. I did not do as well the second time. <laughs> it, it was really hard going through the bullet hell with all the tears in my eyes, just to say. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the list could only ever deplete. It literally... Like, if you can only add one to the pool at most when you finish it it literally can't increase i i well, i somehow highly doubt that there's an actual list that is depleting and like there's a group what, that will never be able to finish it the thing is you'd never really know you know especially yeah. if you did it like cross region because i had like a lot of people from japan in my like, in like giving me the quotes and a couple of people you know yeah, like same. people so they could just say like, "All right, hold on to that person for like three or four. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it totally exactly. Yeah, but, well, yeah. So, but I, yeah. 
I still think, I mean, to me, the, the, the quote-unquote sacrifice still works no matter what. Because even if they didn't, like, delete your data and get rid of it forever, the notion that you yeah. gave that to help them. But it's it's total. I, I don't no, know. To, I think it, it's still kind it of... Is, uh, sorry, to, to, be, to, to be perfectly clear, I 100% agree. I think it's amazing, and I think it is a huge one-up from the, the original Nier that deletes your data yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. a different reason. And it's, like, not... it's It still hits you. But I can't believe that they actually found a better reason to delete your data mm-hmm. than yeah. in the first one. So, no, I totally agree with you. I just think, like, actually how it works, I don't actually think it, like, works, yeah. works. Which We'll never know. Well, yeah, no, we'll, we'll see in two months when nobody can finish it, right? Okay, I found something magical in picking your credits message. There were a lot of actually really mean options, but I never saw any mean messages during my two run-throughs of NBA. Yeah. Everyone yeah. was really, really positive. Yeah. I forget I, what I, the one we did sad. was for the stream, but I remember it had something about like 2B and 9S and it like, cause we were 2B and 9S voice actors. So we wanted to have like 2B and 9S support you or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, for sure. There's a lot of good ones. Like platinum game sucks. <laughs> this is kind of, <laughs> this is kind of a combination question from Dale 619 er and Tyler Talabuck. Um, I kind of fuse them together. Uh, what's your view on ending E specifically if sh- Kira saw it as a sad or happy ending. Do you think Yoko Taro's lust for sad ends will have them all repeat their mistakes over again? I was kind of mixed, honestly. Emotions were running so high this entire game that, I mean, I felt better about it than I did about the other endings, but... (laughs) So I, as a bit of a pessimist and a nihilist myself, I found the game as something actually positive. Because normally the, stip- normally the stereotype from my viewpoint is nothing matters in real life and sometimes death is even easier than trying to keep living. And Automata has this kind of viewpoint in spades, but at the same time it keeps this little shred of hope. And uh, this little shred of hope is constantly telling you, well, um, things might go bad, but you know what? They might not, and maybe that's worth giving life a shot. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I... Yeah. I- I think that's I, like the one of the core messages with the game. Like, there's a bit even where uh, I can't. I think it it's, it might be Popola or Devola, or it could even be Nine S, who talks about how like even though it's incredibly unlikely we'll ever restore humans, like we can't just stop. We can't just give up. You know, like it's never gonna happen if we give up. So, I I thought it was an incredibly positive ending in that sense because I felt like that's the message was like they're not necessarily doomed to repeat their mistakes, and also like you know. Because of Drakengard 3, like, all timelines and possibilities are canon. So, like, yeah. ultimately, there there is a possible future where they end up at the mall buying t-shirts for each other, you know? <laughs> or, choking on, or choking on fish. And yeah, no. a it, lot of, um, it, for sure. the whole, like, never-ending spiral of life and death thing. Yeah. Yeah. I hate, yeah, I, too. I hate to keep on referencing animes because I'm a giant fucking weeb, but, like, it... Kind of, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, Evangelion's ending of, like, well, we can restart again. Things might suck this time. Or they might not. Who knows? I just want to be in 9S to be happy. Is that so hard? Yes, it yeah. is. It's a Yoko Taro game, I know. I no, want 9S bit, just to yeah. have a happy life. That's all no. I ask for. He's a good boy. No. He's my he, precious little boy. Yeah. I think I jokingly... He grew on me. He, he grew on I me. I think I called... I jokingly referred to the game as 9S in a terrible, no good, very bad day. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and if you think about how many times he's restarted, it's literally like his first day every time. <laughs> it's Groundhog like... Day, but with more robot, with more. It's incredibly horny Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a good one. Uh, what's your favorite moment in the game? I guess I'll go last. We'll start with uh, Liam. What's your favorite moment? Um, I think for me, it was the orbital mic drop that was the trailer after ending B. Um, because like the 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 like the drake and guard games they work on like you like finish a branch and then you just continue playing and then you finish another branch and and near near's thing was okay you're just going to replay it and there's going to be a bit more context you're going to replay it there's going to be just a bit more context so like i finished a and then i finished b and then i i was very strongly expecting okay, well, I'm going to start as A2 now. I'm going to find out why she went to kill the Forest King. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play as A2. And when that, like, trailer hit and the next sequence of the game was to take place afterwards, um, 
it had it threw me so far for a loop and that that entire sequence from the like orbital mic drop that is the trailer to the 20 hours in title card uh was just astounding and i i question whether i'll be so surprised by something in a game ever again uh it was kind of like mel gear solid 5's like trailer for the second part that never delivered but ex- ex- did. executed so much better yeah exactly uh, um i think we don't i talk think about that <laughs> yeah, i think uh for me that was probably the the strongest bit and then the ending like ending e starting from like when you have the shmup sequence uh onwards but I, th- I think that for me just like it was such a surprise i i would never have ever expected ending c and d to take place after because that just wasn't what happened in the previous game and for some reason i was like well that's yeah it's a sequel it's mm-hmm. gonna be that you know so maybe that's stupid of me but like fuck man <laughs> oh right, ozzy what's your favorite what's your favorite part Ah, uh, geez um i have two i have two so i'm sorry uh the, fr- the first one for me is kind of a lame one, which is that, like, the first time I accidentally did the self-destruct sequence on the spa- on the bunker, and I got a bad <laughs> ending, and I was like, oh, wait, did I beat the game? Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Okay, cool. Um, but in general for me, I think, like, probably just the literal gut punch that was, like, ending D slash sagging into ending E was just, like, it, it fucked me up. It fucked me up in a way I don't think a video game has in a ver- probably since Metal Gear Solid 3. And I just kind of, like, sat there, just kept on quietly whispering to myself, like, oh, no. And just, I put the controller down and just started crying. Now, was that 9S's ending, or was that A2's ending? Um, that's the one where you, where, you play, where you choose 9S. Okay, wasn't it, like, the worst feeling when you saw, like, him slip over his own blood and shit like that? Yeah, and then you get the whole text message, you get the whole line, the wall of text from Adam and Eve, and it's just, I, I was, like... I, if you go through my tweets from like that was happening, you can just see me slowly just breaking down and just being like, "Oh no, what is happening?" <laughs> yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, yeah, like seeing him fall on his own sword and stuff. That was like really really well done. It was it was very kind of uncomfortable to watch, and that's something that I haven't really felt from a video game in a while. I yeah, I think the way Nine S became unhinged uh, was was really quite well done. Um, yeah, I loved his character development. I thought, yeah. like, you know, before even playing it or anything, just based on seeing the script when we were recorded, I was like, oh, he's going to be, like, that annoying sidekick character, right? And then you're just like, <sighs> like, later mm-hmm. on, I'm just like, I want to protect him at all costs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually, I did not like him at the very beginning of the game because I thought he was an annoying sidekick, like, emphasis on annoying. <laughs> like, I just couldn't get into him. And then, like, st- toward end of Route A and then st- Route B especially, I'm like, nah, all right, now I dig him. Now I'm into 9 Yeah. And yeah. it's very like, interesting, um, Route B, because everyone's basically shitting on 9S the entire time. And it's kind of like the opposite of, like, when I went from high school to college. In high school, everyone picked on me and, not, and like, college, no one knew me. And it's like, oh, we can make a fresh start. This was kind of like the opposite where... You're really cool as 2B, and then when you go to 9S, everyone just fucking dunks on you constantly. <laughs> but it did, it did make me appreciate him a lot better afterwards. Uh, definitely. It's, like, really, really uh, remarkable execution of, like, the decoy protagonist kind of trope. Yeah. Like, really, really strong. Don't talk to me uh, about Kira. execution regarding 9S. I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, for sure. Kira, for sure. what's your favorite moment? <laughs> well, I feel like my favorite moment is so, like, simple and kind of silly compared to all the stuff that you guys are talking about because I mean obviously it's there were a lot of good moments and a lot of really heavy moments but I was not me I'm gonna bring up something so transparent don't worry okay so it's okay (laughs) that I bring up something trivial as like one yeah mine's shallow as shit don't worry okay I really like it when she calls him nines for the first time and then (laughs) she kind of like tries to hide it I think that's the cutest thing ever because I just I love them I'm sorry that uh-huh. is the most Moe moment in the entire game. I do that right, sometimes so with his it, voice it's, actor it's in really person. Good. I'm I, just like, oh, um, go over there, Nines. And he's like, what'd you call me, Tubi? Nine S, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I thought that was really well done, too. And how, and how that, like, slipped out a couple times through the game as well was, was really strong. Oh, and that made her death scene um, even more sad. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I... Rage. I have a thousand, but the shallow... I'll bring up the shallow one real quick, but then one, another one I really like, I don't think a lot of people... But um, when Pascal finally d- like gets in the angles and just starts beating the crap out of <laughs> that, everything. That was, yeah. that was a really, really cool moment, for sure. 
There was, yeah. And then, of course, it, it kind of goes downhill from there. But anyway, we'll yeah. just leave it there. But actually, um, while I, I, I have a lot of favorite moments, especially like ending A and everything like that, I love the breakout characters, Pod 42 and 153 in Route C. And when they're talking to each other, trying to figure out what to do about 9S and A2, and there's one point, and I forget exactly how they phrase it, where I think 42 or 150, one of them expresses like concern over his psychological well-being, and they're like, you know, we, we should monitor this, yeah. and I agreed. And then there's this really pregnant pause, and I forget the phrasing, but one of them says, but I don't know exactly how to do that. And the other one's like, agreed. And it was like this, it's, I don't it's know. It's very like, humanizing. It kind of gives me... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It like gives me goosebumps just to have like these two machines that are like he's going crazy. We have to do something about it. Like agreed, and then it's like I, I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, <laughs> and for yeah. them to even and have that like, awareness. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that and Pascal beating the shit out of the other angle. Yeah, it it was so cool by the way when like Pascal comes out with you to fight and you see Pascal fire like a giant laser beam out of his chest. <laughs> uh, I thought that was fucking dope. <laughs> All right. Uh, mine's really basic, but um, so when you first fight Adam and Eve, I didn't notice that um, they were doing the this must not continue version of the Birth of the Wish song. Because I guess it was on too quiet, because or I fought the battle too quickly because I didn't notice. But when you got to become his gods, I realized there was a certain rhythm to it, and I was like, "Holy shit! This this music's tying into what's going on." And it yeah. took me like a whole two minutes to realize, "Oh wait, this is the song," and it just made this whole it made the whole sequence really really creepy. <laughs> No, definitely. Absolutely. That was another. There's so many good scenes yeah. from the game. Shout outs, like, shout outs uh, to Ending Y and everything leading up to that as well. <laughs> what is ending, which one's Ending Y? That's the one with uh, Emil. Oh. Uh, no, I didn't get that one. If, if, you, one if, you, if you become invested in Nier, the first game, um, I highly recommend you go back for Ending Y because it's very cool if you've played the first game. If you haven't, it's all right. But, like, mm. yeah. All right, now I guess we can tangent to... Um, I think this is my favorite o- OST, probably of the year. I still need to buy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bought it, and then I wasn't really listening to the lyrics during ending E, so I kind of missed that. I was driving to a work event, I put that song on, and I was like, oh my god, like, I'm gonna get really emotional before this work event, because now I freaking get what they were singing about and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Anyway, so when I, I bought when I bought that song, I forced myself to listen to it 20 times to kind of distance myself, because I was actually crying when I was first playing it <laughs> and then um and then i went back and i listened to the live version nope the tears kept coming <laughs> i think it has to like be the chorus tears part. automata uh, oof, that can't continue <laughs> that, that live concert is really good but i need to watch the rest of it still yeah no it's great um on the music there's just so much that impresses like having a chiptune version of almost every track that transitions nicely as you hack yeah, um, it has to be like timed perfectly too. So yeah, really well. um, like musical transitions between phases where they'd add on like layers of, of well, other layers of music um, that like reminded me a lot of like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and some of the some of the technology they used there. Um, the music's just crazy and like like as far as like good video game music this year, the only competition is the like. Shoji Maguro with a kazoo that is Persona 5 versus like the <laughs> I mean, perfection of a good soundtrack too. Right? It, yeah, no, no. Uh, Persona 5 and and uh, Breath of the Wild have phenomenal soundtracks, but like, boy, boy, near Automata's soundtrack. No, like, I, can, as, I completely agree. Yeah, and like also as a sequel, it's really strong. I saw I saw a few people criticize that they didn't like that like um, near Automata used a lot of the music, like a, a, had a lot of remixes from near. Um, but ultimately, like, that's kind of a sequel thing, right? Like, when you play a Mario game, you expect to hear remixes of Mario's theme and stuff. So mm-hmm. I thought the, the Nier Automata soundtrack was just fucking breathtaking. And some of the mixes, some of the remixes of older tunes were really, like, poignant. It's definitely one of my favorite soundtracks for anything in a long time, I would say. I just thought of another moment that really got to me. So on three of the side quests, the one where you're getting the body parts for that one guy, the one where you're talking to ex- Execution Robot, and also um, the one where you're rebooting one of those two lovers, it plays a song called Morning, which is really fucking spooky. Because it's after you do something that's kind of morally wrong, and it just makes you feel really bad afterwards. If you know what I'm talking about. Mm. Oh, I know oh, what song right. you're talking about. Yeah, that song is really... I like that song a lot. Shoutouts to Theme of Happy Child. <laughs> You know, the, you know the one where the the child is singing. Yeah, it goes la la la. And that like one's that. fucking great. I love that song. I sing along every time. 
I do find it funny too when you're fighting the dojo robot, you'll hear Emil's car come by every once in a while. And <laughs> oh god, moves. Emil's humming is so good. That's it, it's so good. I have nothing else to say about Emil's humming, it's just so good. <laughs>I mean, as far as villains, like Yoshikage Kira, I've only seen up to part four. I haven't read anything because I'm not a nerd. Um, uh, I, I, I really like Kira. He's really like phenomenal. And as far as stands, like I really like Okuyasu's stand a lot. Um, as Man. misused as it is, I, I, I like the hand a lot. I think it's really, really... Like, it's so plain, but it's really cool at the same time. I don't know. It's Something really about overpowered it. if you think about it, because he can literally just kill anybody he wants, but, you know, he does, he's not as violent as everyone else. Yeah. I also don't like Anubis, but... <laughs> he, got what he, got, he got what he got coming to him. Yeah. All right. Slow beef? I, uh, I haven't watched JoJo. Oh... Yeah, you, well, he has kids and a wife, so he's not a nerd either. <laughs> Once you hit 60, uh, it all just stops. Whatever Liam said sounded good, though. No, I'm, uh, no I, I, I just haven't gotten around to it. It's like one of those. It's on my list. No worries. Okay. Uh, mine is, um, my favorite villain is Kira, but my favorite stand is um, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. So there we go. A fusion of both your answers. I feel kind of I feel kind of bad because uh, my girlfriend and I are doing our first couples cosplay this year, and we're doing Kira and Remy, which I think is like the worst first couples cosplay ever. To do. Oh, that's fun though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. If people want to find you, where can they go? Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle. You can either search my name or it's spelled R I N A C H A N, and you should totally follow me because I just post crap about Nier all the time. <laughs> Okay, and what games do you have coming up besides Puyo Puyo Tetris? Um, nothing that I can talk about. <laughs> but yeah, you should go play Puyo Puyo. Um, the re-release of uh, Disgaea is out soon, right? Yeah, that's true. The Switch version of Disgaea. And then try to get me in Fire Emblem Heroes. Oh, that's yeah. correct. Yes, oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, see you guys. Thanks so much for having me. Nice, yep. to, see you. nice to meet you. Take care. Pleasure talking to you. To be out. <laughs> So, while Kira departs, I guess we will take a break for a moment. If you have any business to take care of, listener, go ahead and do so for about the next minute and 30 seconds. We'll get back to you. Enjoy this BGM from Poyo Poyo Tetris.
um, anyway, we'll continue this conversation. Um, so I guess, uh, question from Laser Keyboard. What's the best way to convince everyone to play this game and see more than just the potentially off-putting amount of beautiful butt? Hey, do you like Cash Run Sins and Platinum Games and the works of Andre Tarkovsky? Then have I got a game for you. I guess I can kind of reveal the secret project that I'm working on because it'll probably fizzle out because I get, like, I have shiny bauble syndrome and I forget it, but I actually wanted to get my non-gamer friends who have never played games before and have them, like, kind of, kind of like something between a Let's Play and a React video where I kind of show them the footage from near Autom Automata mm -hmm. and, like, kind of get their thoughts on it and stuff like that because I really was interested to see, like, what people who aren't in the games think of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how I, I would do it, by personally making them sit through the I entire hate the game. Sound. This is going to be the douchiest thing I say ever, and, like, Tom, you can, you can just cut this out if it's too bad. Um, <laughs> it's that, like, I definitely do think this is probably the pinnacle of, like, quelling this the really stupid argument of, like, our game's art. I feel like this is a, a grand yeah. slam yeah, of, I, yeah, games are art. I didn't want to say the words, but that's kind of where I was going. Okay, yeah. I mean, I hate saying I hate saying that phrase, but like, no, know. it's very apt the here. Thing, yeah. yeah. And what I love about it too, it's one of the rare games that like the story and things in it only work as game. You can't real, you know what I mean? Especially yeah. the oh, totally stuff, great. obviously, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Those are my favorite kinds of stories like that. Sorry, go ahead. Um, on, on the question, yeah, what is the best way to convince everyone? Like, you know, my, my normal technique is to scream about things on Twitter. Uh, but it's, it's a hard, like, it's, a, it's a hard sell, you know, it's, it's not colorful. It's not a franchise everyone knows and love. It's loves, it's not, you know, it's not friendly and fun. It's depressing and dark and on like, and the, the trailers evoke this, like, kind of unhappiness and mm -hmm. like even like action games melee based action games are really not as popular as they used to be it's it's a it's genuinely a hard sell for a lot of people it really is and like what's the best way to convince everyone to play this game i think it's just you know just keep telling people that it's really good and you're not we're not you're not going to get everyone the the, the it's yeah. not worth dying on that hill because this game is not going to be the game that 10 million people play through uh that's just not ever going to happen but you know if you know someone who's really into games, tell them, you know, this is a really remarkable game. This is a really special game. This is, like, not many games are like this or as good as this. Don't spoil anything. Please be careful with your spoiler <laughs> etiquette. I um, think the spoiler etiquette for Nier Automata has been really bad compared to the first game, actually. Oh, I thought um, it's been pretty good. I haven't seen anyone spoil anything at all. Um, yeah, I managed to get throughout it, being spoiled well, somehow. Yeah, the, the stuff... The, the stuff that I hate is, like, when someone's like, oh, I just started ending B, uh, is yeah. this what the game's gonna be? And then, like, the next guy goes, don't worry, ending C is a completely different thing that takes place after. And it's like, well, you just spoiled the big thing. Damn uh, yeah, it. I was guilty of that, because I had, I wanted someone to finish it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, whenever people asked me, all I, all I kept saying was just, please keep playing. Just please keep playing. Because, like, I, I have to do everything I can to not ruin those moments, but I don't want to sound like I'm, like, holier than thou or any shit. But I, I, I think, like, to answer Laser Keyboard's question, really, it's just, like, just tell people who like games that this game is really special. And, like, you're you're not going to get everyone to play this. Don't even bother dying on that hill. The challenge I, I would kind of give to people, too, is I can't really think of many games like it outside of Nier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to compare it to. It I just kind of stands alone. Yeah, the closest I can think is maybe, like, the works of Hideo Kojima are probably the closest... Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Uh, I would draw some comparisons to Undertale, where it tries to give you gotchas and I, emotional moments constantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think I agree that Hideo Kojima's works are probably the most comparable because they're um, in both in terms of gameplay and storytelling, they're incredibly competent. Which you can't really say of Nier and Draken Guards, which are not as competent in the gameplay field, and you can't say of like Platinum's games, which are not competent in the story field, like at all. Mm -hmm. um so I, I i do think like it kind of fits more into there but even even then the gameplay is so distinct from metal gear that it's like i i do i i agree with slow beef on that that like it really there's not much like it if there's anything like it at all you know it's 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 just like a remarkable happy accident you know mm-hmm mm-hmm 
I will, that's my pitch, by I the way. I will say, by the way, I um, I just lent it to a coworker of mine who was really interested in playing it, and I just attached a note to it that just said, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> All right, here. Here's my hard sell. Okay. You're a millennial. You have HBO. Have you seen True Detective? <laughs> the season everyone likes? You know Russ Cole? <laughs> the game's Russ Cole. Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'll work. I'm out. I'm down with that. Yeah. I, I, okay. I'll give it. I'll give you that. How, how many subscribers does HBO have? Because yeah, that's a lot of people. Bingo. <laughs> I think Here, we just solved the problem. Season three, of True Detective. It's just near Automata. Yeah. Square Enix, hire this man. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> all right. I guess we got. We're gonna go to our final round of questions. Um, all these will be really simple, quick ones. Just answer whatever you want. Okay. Uh, favorite question. We'll go in order from Hazu, Liam, the slow beef, than me. Wait, what? Which was uh, my favorite question favorite character. in the podcast? Oh, favorite oh, character. Oh, sorry, did I say favorite question? Yeah, you said I favorite like, question. Minute, Tom. I was like, wait, I'm being quizzed okay, on I'm the quiz? That, I'm striking that from the record, okay. <laughs> <laughs> favorite character. Uh, Pazzi, what? who is your favorite character? Oh, man, can I just... Okay, can I just say all of them, or do I have to ex- do I have to do I have to pick? Just say say all of them. Okay, yeah, it's all of them. I love I love all okay. the characters in this. Um, I I would say to be uh without question. I really like her her like intensely tragic role in the game. Um, there there's just so it's it's so overwhelming the tragedy she went through. Like l- like the amount of times she had to kill nine s. The amount of times she had to to do her job and suffer through it. Like the that 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 really like got me more than anything like even 9s seeing like even 9s's bit like it's fantastic don't get me wrong but like uh 2b had to go through that a million times more than 9s and like still fought through it still fought alongside him still did everything she did to be with him you know not like she didn't just like off herself or anything i mean maybe she did and she got restored but like i like to think she didn't i don't know and how hot was that strangling? Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. I no. want to say actually, yeah. after after I beat after I beat the game, after I got ending e, D and E, I uh, immediately texted one of my friends, and I was just like, I regret ever being horny for two B. Uh, I don't, buddy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, slow beef. Um, I regret saying that just now. No, <laughs> uh, no. Um, now the world will know. I'm not even- Two, uh, I really like 2B. I really like Pascal. I, I, I really do mean it, though. I really think Pod42 kind of broke out later, especially his interactions with A2. Um, yeah. I, I, I just, and I, I really liked his, like, his thing at the end when Pod153 is like, okay, let's erase it. I will not. You know, like, I, yeah. I just, I, I really, there's so many characters, but I, I, uh, I'm gonna go with, uh, 2B slash Pod42. Yeah. I, th- I think that, uh, like, they really sneak up on you, those ones, like the pods, and getting their their moment where you're like, oh yeah, they're machines yeah. too. Of course, they'd have the same capacity as the androids and the machines. Like, yeah, like, uh, but it, I don't know. It really snuck up on me. Where like when it happened, I was like, of course, but but I wouldn't. It didn't occur to me before it, immediately before it happened. You know, so a good pick, good pick. Mm. Proposal. Those were mine too. The pods. Mm-hmm. I think you start catching on that there might be more to your characters um, at the start of Route C, where. Pod forty two won't shut up unless um, A <laughs> two gives him a response of what she plans on doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like the, the moment, the moment you, f- I'm going to pull. The moment you finish you f- your first like, uh, quote unquote, like chapter as either A two or nine S in the latter like chunk of the game, and you see them like the pods talking to each other. You're like, all right, all right, all right you're doing, you're doing it. All right. Um, if you can change one thing about the game to make it better, what would it be? Um. I think that um, A2 needed more character development. Um, I think she got the short end of the stick. Um, Now, like, there's a lot, like, okay, so uh, because of the way the androids are, you'll have to research this if you want the full details. It's really, like, in-depth and convoluted and shit. Because of the way the androids are, 2B was able to, um, like, like merge her mind with A2 really well because they're both the 2 archetype, which is their, like, emotional and behavioral type uh so they were able to like get together real good but a2 turns so fast from like got a holocaust all machines to life is so precious like she turns so quickly from those two things um that i like i didn't find it unbelievable because i got like i got it but 
I feel like she could have used a little more in that yeah. regard. It's like almost um, immediately after visiting the Machine Village. It's like suddenly she's just suddenly 180s and it's just like, oh, all life is precious now. Getting toys for kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think... Um, oh, fuck, it's only one thing. Am I allowed to have two or three Go things? Ahead, yeah, fuck. There's no rules here. Okay, because, yeah. Um, uh, 9S, I think that the the meat box and the soul box, like those the three, the t- three towers that he had to climb... I think Mm -hmm. that, like, it's cool that he had these little, like, mini dungeons to do, right? And that, like, uh, it made sense, and it was was credible. But I don't think they were the most, like, enjoyable parts of the game, not by a long shot. Um, Mm -hmm. I personally found them a bit repetitive, and I know that that complaint was echoed by a lot of people. So I I really, I wish they would have been able to kind of, like, build a more elaborate area there. Or, like, it would have been nice if they could have introduced a new area entirely before you go into the tower, you know, like, in, in that back half the of the game. Or the palette or something like that. Just it was really similar the whole time. Yeah, I just really feel like before you enter the tower, but after you start, uh, like, the, the, the third route, um, I really wish there was a new area there. Because, like, I felt like that was where it was hurting the most for, for repetition. Um, and uh, some of the side quests still suck. You know, <laughs> in near there were shitty side quests, and near Automata has less of them, but some of them still suck. So, you know, uh, that said, it's it's less than in near, so they is a huge improvement. You know, that's 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 those are my that's all I got. Otherwise, I think the game's a fucking masterpiece. So, slow beef. What did you hate? <laughs> the virus corruption scene is the most awful thing in the entire game. Like playing. Oh it? yeah, playing yeah, it. Yeah, playing it. Yeah. I uh I screwed it up twice. I got knocked into the pit. Yeah, I, I did too. And yeah, I don't know why it's in there, to be totally honest with you. It's it's I guess to break up some cutscene heavy stuff, but It's you, real dramatic. She dies anyway. <laughs> but she dies anyway. Yeah, like you're just kind of um... stumbling with her through the whole overworld. Like, okay, the starting part where she's in flooded city, yeah, sure, maybe give me that. But, like, having her go through the whole city ruins, it's, like, totally pointless, and... They could have put you clo- much closer, and then you didn't have to make a yes. stupid jump. That really bad yeah. jump. Yeah, it's... I hated every second of that, and I, I... I will fight people on that. It was just awful, and... Yeah. Um... It's, it's tenuous, that's... for sure. I didn't hate it, but, yeah. like, it's... It's not a thrill. Like, the, the most thrilling thing about it is how they, like, they rig her like percentage so like the closer you get to the objective the faster it depletes so like everyone has a very even though like it seems like oh shit i'm gonna die it's like no you're actually pretty good until you reach the bridge you really have to wait for a fucking long time to die anywhere else so but then you die anyway so it's like yeah so i can i can see why for a lot of people it was like way too way too um i i really don't normally mind that kind of stuff like when you fight a boss and you lose to it i I don't mind that usually this though is like it was such a slog i had so much trouble with it and then just to lose anyway it's like we'll just make the whole fucking thing a cutscene and leave me alone well because even things like the microwave uh the corridor and metal gear um were like fast and short well those are the same thing basically um and they showed like cutscenes during the same time Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's better ways to do it, I think. I just think that was the low point of the game for me. That's fair. One other small thing, and I and I actually don't agree with this, but it's a complaint I do see, is 9S and 2B feel a little inconsistent with how they feel toward the machines, because some of the side quests you do, like, I don't know, like, 9S nine, nine would be like, that's so weird, like, they have a sense of, like, family and things like that, and it seems like he's starting to get it, and then later he'll be like, well, they don't mean, they don't think anything, and I don't even mean, I mean before yeah, Route C and it, all that. It's it's possible to play some side quests, like, in an order that, that results in yeah. that, for sure. Uh, yeah, I really don't yeah. think that's, like, a, a tried and true flaw with the game. No. It's, like, maybe something you could, you know. Yeah, I, like, it's a bit weird if you stumble upon it, but... I, yeah. It's a screw you get Titan, I would say. Maybe. But. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like it's it's not like it's not worth note, you know. Um, um I mean, both Liam and Slobe, you both pretty much brought up a lot of my complaints with the game. The only other really one I had was that, like some of like the bullet hell stuff for hacking was a little bit clunky, but like that's just a very minor complaint. Otherwise, besides all the other stuff, it's like this game is perfect. It's a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I like um have having time to reflect on it like i think i i do think like even for me like i find perfect is a bit strong but i think that's like i, I don't find that an issue because like near is a game i consider an absolute 
masterpiece. I consider it like a total diamond and I would recommend it to anyone. Mm-hmm. But that game that game is fucking flawed. But despite it, I still consider it a masterpiece. I think it's way more than the sum of its parts. And in the same way, I think Near Automata is way more than the sum of its parts and mm-hmm. is a masterpiece. But I like if I had to review it or score it, I think I'd end up scoring it like a nine. Because I, I can see flaws that people didn't like that oh, might no, not definitely. have affected me. Um you know, like I, I, I saw people online who were playing on normal and who were dying over and over in the opening section and couldn't like get to the game. And they were, you know, you know, the game like after three shots, it doesn't give you like a continue or something like that. And that, you know, like even if that didn't affect me, even if that didn't affect y- you out there, listener, and even if you're thinking, well, you just want to make the game casual. It's like, no, it's not that. It's like for some people, that's not going to be the ideal experience, you know, and it's like it's Honestly, I can see there, there's flaws, but that doesn't yeah. mean. Like, like, just like Nier, which is a severely flawed game, that doesn't mean it doesn't get to be a masterpiece, you know? See, you know, yeah, no, I, and I'm, by the way, first of all, total agreement. Um, there's things with the game that'll stay with me afterwards, which I think is the mark of, like, a master stroke kind of game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is, like, though, I, I, I still think manual saving, I don't get why, and it doesn't seem... I thought, when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, they're going to do something clever with that, but then it's like, they kind of didn't. There yeah. actually is, but it's not, it's not really that... Great. Um, so the point of that is you're saving a backup of your memories to the computer so you can make clones of you. So after you get to Route C, that you know this is mm-hmm. uh, the bunker isn't live anymore. So you have to reload yeah. your saves every time. So I think that's the gameplay tie into that. Oh sure, but I lost man. two hours. No, of I, I hear you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it, that, that's a it's a bit of a thin reasoning. Yeah, mm. but, yeah. I thought. I thought knowing what I knew about Nier with the deleting the save thing, it was going to do a thing, have a little more direct with that, but it didn't. It did that thing you've described. So I, yeah. Anyway, not to belabor the point, but yeah, but still a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I guess in my opinion, I'm going to probably be in the minority here. I think, um, yeah, you really didn't like enough, it. <laughs> there wasn't, um, <laughs> enough differences in route besides all the new perspectives you got from 9s um i like the storytelling bits those are really cool like i felt like a and b could have been like one giant route like they did with route c where you get to switch between characters from and then see boss battles or things from their perspective um i just felt it was like because i played 20 hours on route a and then luckily route route um b was only like five hours but it just i was felt like i was going through emotions just waiting for that little bit of text to say oh that's what's different yeah, I I feel like yeah that could have definitely have been like I don't know how like they could have condensed route B because some stuff is just out and out the same. I would have yeah. had like mm. maybe if it was like more content or maybe if he got separated for longer and had to fight like a completely different boss or something. I think that I, would have been worth it. I I, I yeah. think like it feels like like uh, bear with me with these numbers I'm gonna just make up, but it, it feels like yeah like twenty percent of it maybe thirty percent of it is totally new and that's great. Those are the good bits, right? And then like um. 50% of it is old, but it flies by. Um, but then the, like, 20 to 30% remaining of, like, the repetitive bits that you remember, such as, like, the big, long shmup section in the flooded city when you play it a second time, it's, like, it's not really a thrill the second time. It's actually that kaiju boss really... kaiju very boring. Yeah. It's really I, dull the second time. Um, I do want to say also... Like, actually, that did remind me of something. Something I didn't like was that whole factory segment where you're playing or you have to just keep on possessing different robots and i was just like oh my god just get on with it <laughs> yeah it goes oh on i hear you yeah. yeah it goes on yeah i you know what one thing i will say be, and i and i i love shoot 'em ups like that's kind of my jam uh if you hack your way through root b it's not that bad because you can kill like most heavy things in like four hits and even bosses are no big deal it gets monotonous but like as you learn the games that does kind of help you through it but even so i still say i wish there was some way we could have condensed it to like you don't have to do this whole yeah like exactly like um the kaiju section for example the, the, that yeah. that for me was the most like egregious one where when i was replaying that i was like because you're killing everything the moment it enters the screen and like you're just waiting for the camera to progress and it's like i don't know i actually don't know exactly how long it is but what like 10 minutes like it's it's that that bit was fucking tedious, straight up. Whereas like the other stuff, like go through the desert to fight Adam, like it kind of flies by. Like you're doing it again, but like you're dashing the whole time, and you're. And to their credit, you know, they do like buff up the enemy stats, so you do get a little bit more challenge on Route B. Yeah, 
but it, but it's like it's fast and it kind of just like again like 50 percent of it you just get through and it's like all right sure but then the 20 30 percent that really sticks with you because it's like particularly repetitive or, or not as enjoyable like that that stuff really kind of sucks a little on the yeah, second and for sure. i guess i noticed one thing um i missed out on ending e uh, ending d where you get to hack into the menu it should have been like set damage yeah. instead of whatever your base your stats on because i killed uh a2 in like two hacks when i missed yeah, out on I, seeing I, the I full didn't... um oh, no kidding yeah i didn't see that until like after i finished the game and went back to it which bummed me yeah out, to listeners but, uh... um basically you when you're doing the hacking mini game on um a2 at the end if you do it long enough and your stats are low enough you get to actually hack into the main menu of the game and do a little fight there and it's really cool looking oh i didn't know it looks, that. Cool. It looks cute yeah yeah it's, it's, awesome. it's well worth going to do yourself if if you feel like loading up your save file very cool like i mean not now that we've told you but yeah however if your stats are too high at that point yeah. it's not gonna you're gonna kill her in like two hits it's still cool <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely uh final of these final round questions um did you cry <laughs> during ending e and how many people did you lose boy uh, did yeah I, cry? I, I i yeah i cried during ending e when i finally when i finally got it uh because i spent like two and a half hours working on it and then i quit for the night because i i couldn't finish it um and then i came back when the next day fortunately i'd got my psn account back and when i got the message for help and i was able to accept help and the chorus kicked in i absolutely cried um and I like I humble bragged earlier. I I did not lose anyone during that that playthrough. But when I went back and played through the game again, um, I did lose some. I don't remember how many people, but a couple. Uh, so yeah, I did cry. It was I and I just I can't believe they fucking landed that save data blow better than in the first game. I I yeah. still can't believe it was believe a really good they, masterstroke. I thought. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely agreed. Yeah, that was me. Um, yeah, I I didn't cry. Um, well, yeah, you've uh, you've got children but, and a wife, so that's exactly it. Once you hit forty, nothing. I'm not forty yet, but like once you hit like thirty six, thirty eight, you know, then it's just like yeah. I'm I'm an emotional robot now. Nothing. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just realized that metaphor didn't work at all in this context. Um, but <laughs> I uh, no, I I really did though, like because. I, I don't know if I'm... Uh, I, I kind of missed what the chorus and the ending song during ending E was, like, meaning. It just totally went over my head until... And I really was, though, driving, listening to the soundtrack later. And then just, like, the lyrics uh, of, you know, like, calling out for help. And you kind of, like, realize, oh, my God. Like, and it all hit. And I'm like, wow. And it was... It it was, like, getting me to on that road. But, um, no. The tears didn't fall. I'm I'm soulless. I think and empty inside. Near Tomda is one of four <laughs> video games now to make me cry. The other ones being Persona Four, uh, Metal Gear Solid Three, and uh, um, Undertale. BMX Triple X. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, that's a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, play Elite Beat Agents? Uh, no, I did Ooh. not. I'm, I'm the worst. E B A. E P. Well, besides oh, that, the, fuck, besides so that, the, um, no, the, the, the Christmas oh, one, You're in, yeah, yeah, the Christmas yeah. one that made me cry. Oh, yeah. that that I might have. I forget. It was so long ago, but oh, I remember that so well. Jeez, it's good. That that one twist a knife. Brothers was another one. The, I didn't cry, but I I like I I I I was playing by myself, not streaming or anything. And I went like. Oh, yeah. like that. Like, it just it, came out it, of it, me. If you haven't played them, Thomas, or, or, or well, anyone, um, the Oendon games as well each have one really sad song, just like the Christmas yeah. song in uh, Elite Beat Agents. And, like, they are just as strong, if not sadder. Like, it's especially the one in Oendon 2 is, yeah. like... Oh, you know I played them, Liam. I have higher scores than you. Oh, yeah, fuck. Man, she... oh, that's a good story. That's a good story. So, um, <laughs> Liam and I were talking about this old website we used to go to to upload our old scores for Winden back before they had, like, online leaderboards. And turns out that we were competing for high scores, like, a decade ago in No Winden and No Winden 2. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is nuts. <laughs> this is good. Okay, um, I guess it's almost time to wrap this up, but I guess I'll ask the question I asked Kira. So, let's plug all of our shit. Where can we find you guys? Hazu. Um, you can find me on twitter.com slash Hazukari. My, I'm probably, like, the least, like, prestigious one of everyone here because all I do is just shout about Idol Master and robots and anime cons I go to. That doesn't sound any different from me. 
No, so like your your memes are well refined though, Tom. You you've got good memes. I've got his bad memes. His memes are very spicy. They are. <laughs> All right, Liam. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RSS Liam and on Twitch and YouTube at Rising Superstream. And I I stream a bunch of video games and I put them all up on YouTube afterwards. And I'm gonna stream shit like I don't know, like Shadow the Hedgehog, and that's kind of all I got going for me. Actually, oh boy. are you gonna just... get all? Are you gonna get all two thousand something endings? All all six million endings of Shadow the Hedgehog coming live. No, I I did I yeah. Eventually. Yeah, okay, you know, I'll commit to that. I can commit. All two million ending. <laughs> Alright, Slow Beef? Uh, you can find me on YouTube as Slow Beef, on Twitter as Slow Beef, spelled just like it sounds. Um, on Twitch, I am effin' Slow Beef, that's E-F-F-I-N, Slow Beef, S-L-O-W-B-E-F. Uh, and I also have a channel called Rift to Pray, which is impossible to spell, don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever R-E-T- spelt it. No, it's I'm not good at marketing. Well, let's well, <laughs> so, try to spell it. <laughs> R e t s u p u r a e. Yeah. Okay. Which would have been yeah. It's like an illegal combination of letters. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's All not right, you can cool. find me at Trongasm. That's T r u o n g a s m. I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, everywhere. Newgrounds even. Oh uh, yeah. Well, no, new my Newgrounds account. <laughs> that's is a different half account. Demon. Yeah. Um, that's when I was twelve, and I liked Inuyasha. That one's called Half Demon Thomas. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> The only cartoon left is Terry Bogard's Day Out, which turned ten this year. It's still a classic, though. Tom, when are you gonna when are you gonna sell out and make a Facebook meme page where you just steal everyone else's content? <laughs> I I have not sold out yet to that degree, so I think I think I'm fine for me time being. Um. Anyway, so this podcast was a very long spoiler cast on Near. I'm hoping in the future to cover other games, and I'd love to have any of you guys back on for those. So other games I want to talk about are like Prey. What Remains of Edith Finch, Breath of the Wild, um, Final Fantasy XV. I'm fucking terrified to even think about Persona 5 right now, but maybe in the future, who knows. So, listener, thanks for tuning in. You have reached a good end. Thanks, and have a good night. Family Guy. Family Guy. Family Guy. Funny moments, funny moments. Funny moments, funny moments.